In this video, I'm gonna show you the number one best way you can use Notion as a private tutor to manage all of your students and keep track of all your lesson history. If you are currently a private tutor, managing a handful of students, or tutoring is something you'd like to get started with, then this video is for you. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Milo, and on this channel, I make videos showing teachers how they can use Notion to speed up administrative tasks or just overall improve their teaching experience. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started using a private tutor dashboard I put together uh, using Notion. This template is really straightforward to use and is broken down into three main areas. One is a student tracker. Second is a lesson planner. Third is a main dashboard with a calendar to keep track of all of your student appointments. This template also has a place for storing notes and important resources you might find. The template I cover in this video will be located in the description down below if you are interested. Now let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do to get started using this dashboard is to create ourselves uh, some new students. So we're gonna come over here and click into students. All of the different pages we have on this dashboard all kind of have a similar uh, layout to them. At the beginning, we have a navigation bar where we have a minimal view and a standard view. We also have a very brief description of the page. We then have uh, some buttons that allow us to either create new students or to create new lessons, and then some different folders that we can use to organize either our students or our lessons. All of the pages on this dashboard have a very similar layout just to keep things more simple and easy to understand. On the student page here, we have two main databases. We have a database for student folders and we also have a database for all of our students. Uh, if you have many students or different groups of students that you teach, uh, these student folders can help you stay a bit more organized. There are also two views that we can use to view all of our students. We have a list view and we also have a profile view that allows you to see all of your uh, student pictures that you upload. To get started creating a new student, we're going to start by creating a new student folder. Let's call this folder YouTube Beginners. And then we're going to give it the new student folder red. From here, this template will just give us a very simple page with a student database. Uh, here we can add in students directly into this lesson folder. For this tutorial though, let's click out of this page and we're gonna use one of these buttons here. Let's click on the new student button. Now here we can create very first student. Let's call this student Peter. Let's now tag Peter to our new student folder that we created earlier. We can click on the folder property here and we'll click on uh, YouTube beginners. There we go. Now, since we made our folder red, I'm gonna change Peter's icon to, to also match. If you know anything about me, I love color coding everything. After we have created the student profile, there are now three other databases that are linked to this profile. The first one we have is the student note database. Here we can create a private note for this student. This allows us to easily keep track of any information we might need. This could be anything from contact information, behavior, learning goals, anything that you need for this student. We also have the lessons database linked to this student now. Here we can create private lessons for this student. The third database that is also linked to this student is is also the student calendar. This is where we can see all of our appointments for this student and what days we need to teach this student. To finish off this student profile, let's just give Peter his own personalized student note. Over here, we can just click on new and this will allow us to create a new note. Let's call this Peter's note. We're then gonna give it a few properties. We're gonna give it the note topic property for student notes. We're also then going to give it a new notebook. Now doing this is not completely necessary, but when you have many students and each student has its own note or maybe multiple notes, this allows us to keep track of tens, maybe hundreds of notes at a time. If we would like, we can also click on new student note here. We can then add in any information we might need. And that's all we need to do to get started creating a new student. As we can see, Peter, our new student, has shown up here on our student list, which we can click into and see all of his information. And we can also click into our student folder and see our new student, Peter, here. The next thing we can do is to start creating some lessons. So if we come over here to the lessons page, uh, we can see that the lessons page has a similar layout to the student page. You have a navigation at the top and you also have two main databases on this page. You have one database for lesson folders and a second database for all of our lessons. Having multiple students all with different learning goals and skill levels can make lesson planning complicated quickly if you don't have a good system of organizing your lessons. And so that's why we have these lesson folders here. So let's begin by creating our first lesson folder by clicking on the create new lesson folder here. We're now going to name this folder YouTube beginner lessons. 
We can also give it the new lesson folder template uh, for red. Now on this new lessons folder page, we now have the lessons database linked to this folder. So any new lessons that we create from this page will directly link and connect to this lesson folder. So let's begin by creating three new lessons. We're gonna click over here to new and we're gonna type in say introduction to YouTube. And then maybe we'll change it to, to red here. Now let's do this two more times so we can have a total of three new lessons. And there we have it. If we'd like to go uh, one step further, we could click into each of these lesson pages and then add in any resources we might need for, for this lesson. I will also quickly explain uh, some of the properties that are associated with this lesson. Uh, we do have a complete property where once you have done uh, teaching the lesson, you can click on complete. We also have the tag progression, uh, which allows you to filter and organize your lessons further. You can really change this to anything you like. I just put this to level one, level two, level three, just to demonstrate that you can group up your lessons uh, with different properties. And then finally, we have a URL where you can include any kind of links that might be useful for this lesson. Let's give our three lessons progression tag, just so we can demonstrate uh, how this property might look like. Now for one of the most important parts of the private tutor system is linking students and lessons together. Uh, there are two main ways that we can do this. We can first go to the student page and then select on one of our students. Let's click on Peter, our newly created student. Now here on Peter's profile, we can notice there are four relation properties that are linked to Peter. We have lessons, notes, resources, and appointments. We're gonna come over here and click on add lessons to give Peter some private lessons. We can now see that our new lessons for YouTube beginners have popped up here. So we can click on number one, number two, and number three. As you can see now, all three new lessons that we just created will show up on Peter's profile. Once a lesson is finished, we can click on uh, the complete checkbox here. When you have tens, maybe hundreds of lessons for each student, uh, this can be really helpful to look at the lesson history and look at all of the lessons that you have taught to the student. We also have another view that we can look at these lessons. We can go to lesson board here. And if you're a little more visual, this might be uh, an easier way to view the student lessons. If we would like, we can also create a lesson through this student view by clicking on new. If we type in a new lesson here, let's say publishing your video, we'll add a progression here. This lesson will also be linked to this specific student. This is also another way that we can create lessons. The second way that we can link students and lessons together is by coming over to the lessons pages here and by clicking on our newly created lesson. If we click on our newly created lesson, we can also come down to one of these relation properties, uh, namely student, and we can click on student and then link other students to this lesson. So if we would like, we can link multiple students to one specific lesson. Let's add in, say, Charlie and Sarah to this lesson. Now, if we were to go over to Charlie's profile, we can now see that this new lesson is also tagged to Charlie as well. Being able to link students and lessons together this way is kind of what makes Notion and also this private tutor dashboard so powerful. Let's say you have 20, 40, maybe even 100 students all with personalized lessons, uh, things can get really disorganized quickly. And so being able to have a way where you can tag and link individual lessons to each student allows you to stay a lot more organized and also be a lot more efficient with your lesson planning. If at any point uh, you get a little confused with all of your lessons and lesson folders, you can come over to the lessons page here and come down to the bottom where we have all lessons and also we can view lessons by folder. Here you can easily see all of your lessons grouped up nicely and what uh, students each lesson is tagged to. Here you can easily kind of move lessons around, delete them, move them. Now that we have our lessons and students created, we can now create our first student appointment by coming over to the dashboard here. On our dashboard, this is where we have our three main databases all come together. We have our students, we have our lessons, and we have our appointments. 
You can notice on the left here that we have our student folders and also a list of our students. Below that, we have our lesson folders and we also have all of our lessons. On the right here, this is where we have our appointment calendar. This is where we can see all of our student appointments and when we need to teach each student. It also allows us to create new appointments and to move them around easily. Lower on the dashboard, we also have favorited notes and also favorite resources. We can now create a new student appointment by coming down to the bottom of the calendar here and clicking on create new calendar appointment. We're gonna call this new appointment Peter for our new student that we just created. We're then gonna give it a, a date and time let's say today. Importantly, we're also gonna come over to this relation property here and click add student. We're gonna find our student Peter and click on Peter. If we teach multiple students in one class, then we can also select uh, multiple students from this menu here. But for just this appointment, we're just gonna select Peter. After we have done that, we can now click on new appointment. Once our appointment template has popped up, we have to do one last thing. If we come down to the lessons database here, we're going to click on this student tab and we're going to select uh, Peter. And so now what we have on this appointment page is we have Peter's student profile and we also have all of the lessons that we need to teach for this student. If we would like, we can click into Peter's profile and we can get access to all of his notes, lessons and his calendar as well. Having the appointment template set up this way makes it really easy for you when you need uh, to look at a given appointment. You can just click on the appointment and have all of the student profiles and all of the lessons that you need to teach for that lesson. Now to create further appointments for our student, we can select the appointment here. We can right click it and click on duplicate. We can then drag this new appointment anywhere onto the calendar. Having the ability to duplicate your appointments like this and move them around the calendar wherever you want just saves you so much time and allows you to stay organized much more easily. On the calendar here, I have set up some sample appointments. And just by looking at this calendar, you can see how clean and organized you can get using uh, a system like this. The private tutor dashboard also has a note section for you to collect notes on your students and any lesson ideas you might have. If we scroll down here, we can see on the notes page that there are three main databases that are on this page. We have the notebooks, which are similar to the lesson and student folders. We have all of our notes, and then we also have some note topics that let us group up our notes a little more easily. We can see by clicking on by topic, we can organize our notes a little more visually as well. If you remember from earlier, we created a private student note for our student Peter. This is now shown up in the inbox. The inbox kind of acts as a draft system. So any new lesson or a new note, you can create it in the inbox, change it and modify it, and then click done. So we can see here, Peter's note is in our inbox. We can go over to status and we can click on done here. Peter's note will now show up at the bottom here. If we click on to student note collection, we can also see that we have all of our students nicely organized here. If we would like to create a note, all we need to do is click on the create new note button. From here, we can give our note a name. We can give our note a new note topic. Let's say a lesson note. We can give it a notebook, maybe cool lesson ideas. And then we can click on one of the templates here. You can see now our new lesson note has appeared in the inbox. Once we have done modifying our note, we can change it from inbox to done. The resource section works in a similar way to uh, notes, but for any cool or useful web resources we might find. If we scroll down here and take a look at the resources page, we can see that the resource page also has an inbox system similar to the notes section. The two main databases we have on this page are resource topics, again, similar to the notes section, and then a list of all our resources. What makes this page very functional though, is if we use one of the Chrome extensions, uh, Notion Web Clipper or Save to Notion. This is a Chrome extension that allows you to save any page to a Notion database. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's say we find a really cool web resource that we wanna save for later. We can go over to our extension and click on Notion uh, Web Clipper or Save to Notion. We can then add it to our resource page. Make sure it is selected for Private Tutor Dashboard. Then we can click Save Page. 
If we come back to our resources page here, we can now see our new web resource is in our inbox. Now, if we'd like, we can open it up. And from here, we have some information on the page saved and also the URL. We can now give it a resource topic, let's say free resources, and then we can take it out of the inbox by clicking on done. Now our new web resource is saved down here. And if we want to find it more easily, we can click on resource topics and we can see that our new web resource is also located on this topics page. The dashboard also has an archive system. So any lesson, student, note, or resource you don't need anymore, you can send to the archive. To do this, if we click on say a lesson or a student, we can go over to the archive property here and just click on the checkbox. Clicking on archive will remove it from the main dashboard and send it to the archive database. If we come back to the archive page here, we can see that our inferences lesson that we selected as archive has now appeared here. If we would like to remove it from the archive uh, folder, we can also uncheck this checkbox. So there you go. That's how you get started using Notion as a private tutor. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions about anything I mentioned in this video, uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you are interested in downloading this template, the link is provided in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.